Welcome, welcome. If you're tuning in tonight, we're going to be doing some painting, and I'm excited to have you here. Uh, tonight we um, have a new setup. So for the first time, I feel like I have a little bit of reverb here, so give me just a second. Um, for the first time, we're still going to have issues with that. We're going to be streaming on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube all at the same time. So uh, this is a first for me, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, let's see if I can get this turned off here really quickly. There, we will not have reverb for now. Uh, and we're going to be painting fish. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be painting tonight. We've got these cute little fish that we're going to be painting and we're going to be doing that in watercolor so tonight you're going to need a few things but first and foremost thanks for tuning in and uh, if you can go to your comments and check and see uh, I'm going to show this on the screen um, you need to grab the imagery for this painting class if you don't wanna draw along. So you can do that in the chat. Um, it looks like for some reason it didn't quite work in Facebook, uh, but on YouTube, you can find that imagery in the description down below or in chat. Um, hey, Laurel, it's great to see you too. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I am. It's been so long since I've been here it feels like and done one of these so uh, I'm really glad that you're here with me and tuning in tonight um, I'm pretty stoked so for those of you uh, I have been out of commission this month unexpectedly and so tonight is really the first live stream back that's the official live stream for the beginning of the year so um, yeah I'm glad that you're here with me and uh, just like Laurel Laurel let me know that she was here uh, by leaving a comment in chat so um, you do that too if you're hanging out and you're going to paint with us tonight. All right, so we'll get to some of the nitty gritty. So like I said, tonight we have um, our classes about painting fish, these fish up here. Uh, and you're going to need to grab the imagery or you can draw along. Um, you'll get to see what we're doing here soon. So again, Imagery for this class is in chat. Oh, sweet. So Laurel said that she had trouble um, finding, they couldn't find the video on YouTube. So I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I'm using a new streaming service, StreamYard. And so, you know, we'll be working out those kinks. So I appreciate you letting me know. Laurel is one of my patrons on Patreon. So she was able to find that link through there. So I'm glad that you were able to find that there. Okay, so. All right, so also I'm gonna just throw this up there. Normally I have a, an updated streaming schedule on my website over at ihavegumption.com over at the calendar. Uh, I'm gonna update that this coming week. And so we will we should be back on track because our schedule is gonna be back on. So I am stoked about that. Okay, so tonight um, you can pick any colors that you want to paint with. Uh, I'm gonna be using a blue and a yellow to mix to make a green. And then I'm gonna be using uh, some yellow and hot pink and orange for another fish. So we'll be doing two fish tonight. Uh, and so this is just tells you kind of what I'm using tonight. Um, if you have questions or comments, please throw them in chat. I'll look up periodically and see those and answer your questions. Uh, let's see. Bear with me, guys. If only I could sing. If you're new here, this is a stream that happens most Thursdays. Usually there's one uh, Thursday a month that I don't stream and that's usually on the first Thursday of the month. And that's just because I have a meeting during that time. So we always stream at this time at 7 p.m. And on the th third Thursday is a Patreon only stream. So uh, we're streaming there too. Okay. Let's see. I think I have caught up with everything. Uh, this class usually lasts about an hour and uh, we just have a really good time with it. So I'm gonna quit 
yakin and I'm gonna get over to So Kyle says he found uh, the stream fine, so that's good. It must have notified him. And Jan, it's really nice to see you here too. It feels like so long since I've connected with you too. So awesome that you're here. I'm really excited that you guys are here with me tonight. And thank you for letting me know that you're here in chat. So let's get to it. Okay, so again, if you want the imagery for this, please check in chat. Should be able to find that link and you can either bring it up on your phone and trace it or you can uh, draw along. We're gonna switch camera views here and I'm gonna switch to my overhead shot. There we go. So this is this is what I did earlier in the week for the promo for this class and uh, we're just gonna have some fun. I'm gonna show you a couple things that I've done here just to uh, mix things up a little bit here. So I drew one of these in, we think, waterproof ink. And also uh, I'm gonna redraw this guy a little bit with a little bit more detail while you guys are sketching out your fish. So you have a little time to draw and catch up with me. And let's see, I'm gonna take this out. All right, so uh, get your pencils ready, get your sketching going. I'm just gonna go over some of these lines so you might be able to see them just a hair better in In the camera here. I'm not quite sure what kind of fish these are. I think they're beta fish, but I'm not an expert on fish, so I just liked how they have these beautiful fins here. So how is everyone doing here at the beginning of the year? Man, it's been a wild one for us. Our family has been crazy in three weeks. Hopefully it is going well for you and you are in good health. I'm just lightly uh, sketching this in. I'm not, I don't really care about pencil marks here so much. I'm gonna give you a little bit more time here so you can sketch and I'm gonna kind of get my paints ready. So I'm showing you this, this is the pen that I used. Now it says that this is indelible ink, but I did a little test and it did a little run. So it could potentially run, but I can show you how I maneuver that as well tonight. Hey, Colin, it's nice to see you. I'm so glad that you tuned in. I feel like I haven't seen you forever too. So thanks for being here with me. I love it. Okay. And I have a variety of brushes here. I have two water receptacles here. And I think we also might try to have a little fun with gold paint too. I have this, this is a uh, beam paint that is a gold color. So I'm gonna get it ready. And then I have to show you this because this was a Christmas gift for me from my husband. Um, my father-in-law and he put this, they built this and, um, it's a special little palette that I can use here while I'm painting. It's nice and small, but it's very pretty. Let's see. Okay. So you guys let me know if you're ready to get to painting. I am going to... So I've wet these beam paints down. So you can, I'm gonna let you see how these beam paints work um, 
tonight. We're just going to play with those because I'm usually using my core paints. And I thought that might be kind of interesting for you. And then these are core paints. This is an Indian yellow color. And uh, this is, a, of course, an opera rose color. Isn't that pretty? So I'm just kind of getting these ready here. So this is a number four brush and I'll be using that for a little details, but we'll be moving up to the number is off of this. This might be a six and this other one is an eight. Just so you know, and these are just round brushes that I'm using. So I'm going to start on my fish that is my pencil drawing. Hopefully you guys are ready to start. Let me know if you need a little bit more time in the comments and I'll just keep blabbing away. But let's see. Also, you know, I have salt here that we might use on one of these fishes. Uh, this is a great technique to give a lot of texture. Uh, so I will demonstrate that on one of these fish too. So I'm just gonna have this in the corner here. Okay, so since I see nothing in the comments, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So this fish, I'm just going to uh, wet the whole thing with just water. This is our wet and wet technique that we know oh so well. And you kind of want to try to move fast. Where I live in Idaho, it seems to dry out super quickly on me. Maybe I just don't use enough water. And I think I'm going to use my uh, beam paints first. So I'm going to use a yellow and a blue. And the reason I'm using yellow and blue tonight is because they mix to make green and so we'll get some fun effects I think with it. So as you can see my guy is pretty wet so I'm going to go in with my yellow here and just drop in some color. This is sort of a gouache color but um, it is a Hansa or a lemon yellow tone. So you don't have to have the exact colors that I have or even the same paint. Um, that's what I like about this class is we, we use what we've got. And as you can see, I'm mixing this blue over here. This blue is basically an ultramarine blue. I can't remember what beam's color for it is. Let's see, maybe I can tell you here. It's called Great Ocean. But see, I can just tap. See, that's drying already on me. I'm just gonna re-wet this here. And you can tap in color. and let it mix. This might be a fun one to use the salt on. Now, if you get your paint in an area that you don't want it, you can just take your paper towel or your napkin and blot it up. So I'm just gonna, I'm just trying to get these areas that I'm afraid are gonna dry. And then you can take, so we've laid down this blue color, but we can go back in and drop in some more intense color by using less water and more pigment. And these paints don't quite move the same as my 
uh, core paints, but they are highly pigmented. Can't even drop some in here. Let's see. I'm going to drop a little bit of this in here. And you can just have fun with it. Um, the beauty of watercolor is how it blends with itself, how it dries, um, the effects that you can do. So we are working wet and wet right now. can use granulation to create texture. And then if you want to, you can actually use your salt. So I'm just gonna show you how I would do this with this fish. Oops, I got a little extra salt there. I always put it in my hand first. And in these areas that are pretty wet and juicy, we'll zoom in here a little bit. I'm even gonna put some up here up above. And then you wanna let it dry completely. So my extra salt I just put back in my lid back on the salt shaker. Sorry, there's my big hand in the way. So you can see that's pretty wet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my hair dryer out. And as you guys are playing, keep playing and have some fun with this. I'm going to dry this. We aren't done with this fish just yet, but um, we have a few more steps that we can do. So I'm going to zoom out here and I'm going to mute myself so I can dry this guy without driving you crazy. So if you have any questions right now, you can go ahead and throw those in chat and um, we'll get started here in a second. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just switch views here for just a second. Whoops, let's see, bear with me here. Um, and just show you, so this is my hair dryer, my regular hair dryer. This is a diffuser that I use uh, actually for my hair, but it works awesome for watercolor because it diffuses the air. And then instead of pushing your water around on your painting, uh, it just diffuses it a little bit. So it is less obnoxious and doesn't ruin your painting because sometimes it'll just shoot paint 
across it. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you if you're new and tuning, turning, tuning in for the first time. So let's get back to our other camera, our overhead camera. Okay. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here, maybe. Here we go. And you can see how the salt has made, let's see if we can get this to focus here, has made this texture. And normally you'd leave this until the end, but for me, I, because this is dry and it has to be entirely dry, you can remove the salt and you can either use a paper towel to kind of scrape and test it to make sure that it will come off. Or you can use a rubber cement pickup. This is a, um, oh, it has an official name. Uh, I call it a rubber, a bugger uh, picker upper, but uh, you can find it in most any hobby store. Okay, so I'm going to dump out my salt into the trash. Now there will be some residue left uh, of the salt just in the paper, so just know that that's the case. And, and then now we can add some more details using our cut, the same colors that we're using with maybe a, a thin brush. This brush has had better days because it has been bent in my watercolor brush holder. But I will show you what I mean here. So if you want to add accents to your fish here, you can use a thin brush like this. You can also just use, let's see, this is the brush that I used to paint originally with. So I can use this brush to do some thin lines too. It's a really nice job of that. And so I love glazing, or this is what I, this is my version of glazing, uh, where you're laying down a color over another color. This just happens to be the same color. But you can see by Placing this blue over this yellow, then you've got this green color. This is the beauty of glazing. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. How is that for you guys? If we're zoomed out, is it too far out for you? Hopefully you can see that detail. I am going to use this thinner brush. Again, use what you have. Um, I'm going to define my fins here just a little bit with this dark blue. And just some areas that maybe I want to define just a little bit. You can get more pigment. So mine's pretty weak here. Let's see if you can, there you can kind of see that a little bit better. That's why I love these brushes. This is a Trikel brush. This is like a liner brush. And they are some of my favorite to do some detailed work with the fish. And typically, your watercolor is going to dry lighter than it uh, goes down on your paper originally. So keep that in mind. Unless you're using core, which I feel they have, they do a really good job of keeping their color. So this is fun because it gives us some texture with the salt. It gives a really kind of loose feel. 
I'm going to um, put a little bit of this blue color in the eye here too while I'm here. Make him look like he's looking at you. Get this gill here. Separate this a little bit. So you can go in and you can add little details or sometimes I'll go in and just make some adjustments. I'm gonna actually mix these two guys. Let's switch this around so you can see my palette here. And maybe mix these two on the palette to create this green color. So I'm using a lemon yellow color and an ultramarine blue kind of color to make this green. And you can softly add color in. Maybe for mine, my, my green didn't mix as much as maybe I'd hope it would. So if I want to go in and gotta make sure all this salt is off there. And just add a little bit of this green effect. Maybe I will add a little bit of green here too. This is your fish, so you can do what you like with it. If I want a more intense green, all I need to do is bring in a little more blue, more pigment, less water. And because this yellow basically is a gouache, it is kind of toning that down just a little bit. But let's see if we can. And basically all gouaches, especially with these um, beam paints, it is a um, opaque watercolor of sorts. So if you're wondering what gouache is, that is what it is. And just have fun with it. That's why you're here. You want to paint, you want to have a little bit of fun. This is your fish. Ultimately, you can do what you want. And remember, when you are painting, like we are painting over something we've already painted, we can also add texture with our brush. So you've added texture with the salt. You can add texture with blobs. You can also, I have pigment in my brush. We'll see if I can get it to work here. Oops. You can tap your brush and also create little blobs. I think it makes your uh, fish feel kind of fresh when they're, they have little. Lobs in there. Okay, and also I think I'm going to let's see where we are at time wise. We're at 30 minutes. I have a darker, let's see if I can find it here. 
I have a soda light color, or it's also known as if you have a Payne's gray color. It's just a dark kind of navy-ish color. I'm just going to put that in the eye to make it just a little bit darker here. And then at this point, you could leave this fish like this. Or you can add some accents with some other fun colors. So we're going to do that since I've got the gold out. Um, and you can do that with gouache, white gouache. We'll see if this uh, gouache actually is going to work for this. You could add scales. This one's probably not going to show up on this guy unless it's in here. Zoom in and see. We may have to forego the gouache if this doesn't quite work. But you can add little dots of gouache. You see that there? Of course, it's going to work in your darker areas, or you could put it in the eye. Let's see what our gold looks like. So, this is a pretty beautiful gold that I got from, it was one of the first colors that I got from Beam, because I don't often use gold in, in my artwork, but I mean, why not? We should be doing that more, especially since we're dealing with COVID, we should have gold wherever we want it. Can you see that? You probably can't see that so much. And you could just put this wherever you want to. I don't know if it will pick it up. There. You see that? Isn't that awesome? I just think it's super duper fun. We're just going to... I'm just going to put this wherever I want to. If you don't have gold, don't worry. Um... We won't be using this in our next fish, but I just thought it might be fun to get you kind of thinking creatively and maybe just use something different for a change. Could even tap it out here. And I love, you know, that watercolor is very approachable. Sometimes it seems very intimidating. If you're one of those folks that feels intimidated by it, don't. It just is more intimidating if you don't give it a try and uh, experiment with it. Okay, so let's check this out. There you go. Fun, huh? Okay, so um, how are you guys doing? Am I moving too fast for you to move to our, our other fish? Let me know in the comments. What's great about these, uh, especially if you cut them out of uh, paper like, like I have, you could throw this in an envelope and send it to your aunt or your uncle or your grandma, and uh, they would love it. Maybe your sister or someone. It's the best kind of card as a personalized kind of card. 
All right, so I'm going to move this guy over here. Again, we'll do the little ooh-ah of the gold. Can't quite see that, can you? Yeah, this gold is highly pigmented by them. If you buy anything from Beam, you might be uh, well served to buy their gold and maybe their silver if you're wanting to experiment with colors like that. So I'm going to clean this up really quick and then we'll get to our other fish. If you have questions right now, go ahead and throw them in the chat. If you're joining late, know that you can get the imagery for this uh, class in uh, the chat there. There's a reference image that you can download for free and uh, paint along or paint at your leisure. Okay. Let's see. So this is the next fish. We're gonna test the waters with this. I uh, I put down ink. It's supposed to be waterproof. We will see if it truly is. Sometimes it isn't always, but it will say that it is waterproof. So we will test it out and um, see if it's really honest to goodness water resistant here. I'm going to mix, here's a little uh, transparent pyrrole orange. So I've got shadows here, but uh, we've got Indian yellow, pyrrole orange, and uh, opera rose. And it might be a little overkill if you don't have an orange. Well, you know you can mix pink and uh, yellow and you can get an orange. I just really love this pyrrole orange color. So I'm just making sure that these have, that these are wet because I mixed them earlier. And I think this one needs a little more pigment here. So we're gonna approach this fish much like the other one. So I'm gonna go in first. I'm just gonna place this guy up here if you're still working on that guy. We can move this out of the way. Let's see. So I'm gonna take some water. I'm just gonna test and see if this pin works. And it looks like it's going to. So I used the pin on the watercolor paper 30 minutes ago at least, and it has set here. Um, it may kind of come out in our painting, we will see. But again, I'm using, I'm gonna just call them Molotov because I think that's how you pronounce it in German. Um, it's spelled Molotov. Uh, these are some pins, just black pins from Molotov uh, that I got here locally. They seem to be really good inking pins. So if that's your GM and you live locally, you can grab those. We don't have, we're lucky to have um, a Hobby Lobby here to get art supplies from. It is the only place here we can get them, unless you order them online. Okay, so uh, we're going to do another wet and wet technique. This is we're laying down the water on this fish, and then we're going to mix some paint in there, drop some paint in there. So... I think I'm gonna start with the pink today because that's the mood I'm in. So I'm just gonna drop this in. This is actually a Daniel Smith opera pink. Opera is not particularly light fast. It uh, doesn't bother me because I just love it. There are lots of different kinds of rosy colors. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to mm, dip into my orange here. You don't have to if you don't if you don't want to mix up orange you can just add your yellow but you can see I'm going to zoom in because this is what I love about core watercolors is the spread. You see how that just goes wild? 
there you can use um, ox gall or synthetic. Core has a synthetic ox gall that you can use to make your paint do this. Now you can see it's kind of my pink is pooling to one side, so I'm just going to move my paper around, let it get in there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and get into my Indian yellow. And this is also a core color. So it should see how it really, it will move so beautifully. And if you want more intense coloring, then you can dip directly into your pigment there. And just play with it and have fun. If you're tuning in from Twitch or Facebook, let me know in the comments uh, that you're here with me. The cool thing about StreamYard is that we can stream to all these locations at one time and get everyone's comments and feedback all at once, which is super cool. I am not much of a, this is the first time that I've streamed on Twitch, I think. So that is interesting to me. It's an interesting platform for artists, I think. I may want to add a little bit of this here. Now you could use salt again if you wanted to, um, to create some texture. Just tapping in this. And then you can wait till it dries a little bit more and tap it in. The hard part is just letting it do its thing and uh, leaving it alone. And I did color outside the lines, but that's all right. I don't mind that. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna grab my hair dryer and mute you guys again. So then we can let this dry a little bit and keep working on it. So keep painting and I'll be right back.
Okay. Awesome. So I'm really enjoying how this is turning out. As you can see here, we've got, I'm going to turn this light on really quick, zoom in a little bit. So we have quite a bit of fun texture that we created with our mixing of our paints and uh, as well as dabbing in. So you could leave your fish like this if you wanted to, or you could go back in with your pen uh, and do some more detail work. I used a 0.4 here on this one, and you could use a thinner, uh, a thinner nib to uh, add some fine details in it if you wanted to, or you can keep painting. So I think, I am going to keep painting, and if you have questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment area so I can answer those questions. I may even add gold to this guy. I said I wasn't going to, but I may have to do that. Truly make him a gold, goldy fish. I'm going to darken his eye here. So I'm using this soda light color. It looks kind of like black here, but it is a dark navy kind of color. And while I let that dry, I can go back in and add some details here. And I'm using this for, it's a size four brush. This is a beam brush. Um, Just add some fine line detail if you want. You can even add little scales if you want to. It's kind of the side U shape. You may not be able to see that just yet, but very light. Let's see if I can darken it up here. Little scales there. Might even try to see what it looks like if I add in this orange for some scales. Let's see. That's kind of fun. Darken this guy up. You can also use your brush to make create thick and thin. So you might start here at the tip here and then press down harder here on your brush and you can create a line that fluctuates in size. Here we'll use this orange to better demonstrate that to really create a beautiful shape. Start off thin, lay down. Thin the tip and then press down. A 
that's what's nice about these. Um, and you can do it with any brush, but uh, that's what's nice about round brushes. Sometimes I really forget to utilize the brush itself to create those awesome shapes. Of course, if you need to get darker, you can use more pigment. I'm gonna create a bit of shadow there. Of course, you can always go back into an area. If you want to make it a little bit darker, you go back in. I like to soften my edges, so I'm going to show you how I do that. Hopefully, you can see this pretty well. Um, so I've got some color there. I want to soften the edge so it doesn't create a hard line. So I've taken my brush, tapped off. Uh, the water and I just tap it into my paper towel and then I take the edge of that brush and run it along the edge there just to soften it out a little bit that's a pretty psychedelic pinky fish isn't it let's zoom out a little so you can kind of see what's happening here also, I think this, I'm going to use this little splatter technique again for this guy. And you, of course, can take your brush and do this motion, but you have a little bit more control on where your splatters end up. You kind of hit it with another brush. We'll zoom in here so you can kind of see that. Hopefully you can see that. My lighting in here is not the best. We'll get some orange and yellow here. Sometimes you need a little more water too. So we'll get a little bit more water there. So that is fun. And then I wasn't going to, but of course I'm going to. I'm going to use this a little bit of gold and just have a little fun with it. So I'm just going to mix it up a little bit here. Maybe just add it to some of the scales a little bit. Maybe to the eye. So I'm sorry if you're having gold envy. You don't have to have gold to make this a fun fish. When I started painting, when I started uh, painting in watercolor again, this was, I don't know, over 10 years ago, I guess. Um, I Some of my first subjects were little fish that I drew. And it it is such a nice thing to start with because it can be intimidating to do watercolor. And fish are colorful and fun and they can be whatever you want them to be, whatever you want them to look like. Got lots of personality. And I think I'm going to add some uh, air bubbles, maybe. We'll see. I'm just using a, this is a cobalt teal. It's just a lot of water and a little bit of pigment. just for fun, because we can. Let's zoom in here.
So you can see that gold show up, but this is a great project for kids. This is a great project for folks who want to do a little painting in their free time or just keep practicing. Uh, it's been weird this year. We haven't been able to do in-person classes and uh, it's been pretty wild in, in that regard. And so this is the next best thing. So if you guys are tuning in with me tonight, thanks. Um, feel free to jump into chat and say hello. Uh, and if you have any questions, now's a great time to throw those in chat as well. Um, if you want to find me on the interweb, you can find me over at ihavegumption.com. We are live streaming tonight on Facebook, Twitch, and on YouTube. And uh, I'm really grateful that you're here with me tonight. So throw those questions in chat. Uh, if you want to go ahead and send me pictures of your artwork, I would love to see it. So if your friends or family or people who tune into this regularly, send me your uh, pictures. I want to see how your fish turned out. And especially if you use different colors. Now, my nephew, Andy, who tunes in often to this, he kind of has takes creative license and it's always pretty fun. So I, I would love to see what he's doing if he's tuned in tonight. Let's see, what can I tell you? Also, I want to say thank you to my Patreon subscribers who are tuned in tonight. Um, thanks for your support. Um, it helps me do this. And uh, we haven't had as many classes as I've wanted to this month because uh, we had an unexpected turn of events this, this month. But uh, we're back on and we're going to be doing more classes. Uh, not only am I going to be doing watercolor classes, but I also will be doing some um, digital classes. So uh, I'm working on that behind the scenes to, uh, if you're interested in learning how to do Procreate, um, tune into this channel, subscribe, uh, because I will be doing some of those as well. And if you want to see more of my videos, go ahead and go to YouTube and look for Gumption in YouTube, and you can see all the stuff that we're doing over there. All right. Well, I don't see any comments and we are at the hour mark, man. We're like right on the hour mark. So if you have any questions or comments, now is the time to throw them in there and uh, we'll wrap up here in about a minute. And yeah. So just want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, it's been really fun tonight and um, yeah. Send your fish cards or paintings to someone you love and let them know you're thinking of them. They would probably love it. And this is awesome. Laurel said that she had fun and she will send pics to me. So that's great. I can't wait to see them. And awesome, Jan. That's great. I think it is a great project for kids. It's just really easy. So if you tuned in late, go ahead and grab that link now in the chat where you can get that imagery so you can just trace it really quickly. You can take this with you and do it with your favorite kids in your life. And uh, yeah. And thanks, Colin. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you guys again really soon. Um, I will, I will be posting information on uh, my social media channel. So I guess I better throw those up there for you if you're tuning in and you are new. And we'll get a schedule going. So yeah, you know what's happening. So thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I appreciate you being here. And I guess that is it for me. So I'm going to take off, eh? And uh, I will see you later. <laughs>